Hello. Today I am with a friend. This is my friend the bear. And I asked him to come because the story I'm going to tell you today is told by a bear. His name is Otto. And Otto is in charge of telling us about the effects of war in our society. It is not an easy story. It is a difficult one but important. And I am going to tell the story and dedicate it to my student teacher, Mechi Simon, because she asked me to read it for you. It's uh, her favorite book and it's also one of my favorite books. So here we are. This is Otto. Besides the writer, Tommy Ungerer, he, um, he was only 13 when the Second World War broke and his community was affected, seriously affected. So, well, this is Otto, the autobiography of a teddy bear. And you see, this book won a prize, the Hans Christian Andersen Prize. So, here we are. Tommy Ungerer, Otto, the autobiography of a teddy bear. I knew I was old when I found myself on display in the window of an antique store. I was made in Germany. My earliest memories are of being stitched together in a workshop. It was quite painful. When my eyes were sewn on my face, I had my first glimpse of a human being. A smiling lady helped me and said, Now look at this one, isn't he cute? Then I was wrapped up and snuggled in a box. It was very dark. Soon I heard rustling and ripping noises and the next face I saw was that of a little boy cheering and he hugged me. His name was David and he was I was his birthday present. David's best friend Oscar lived next door. They spent most of their time together sharing jokes, stories and games. They called me Otto. One day they decided to teach me how to write. With my clumsy paws, you know I I don't have fingers. I knocked over the ink pot and splashed myself with purple ink. The indelible stain remained for the rest of my life. Since handwriting was a failure, the boys fetched David's father's typewriter, which was much easier to use. Look at me here. Life with David and Oscar was a lot of fun. We would play all sorts of pranks. They would scare old Frau Schmidt by dressing me as a ghost, lowering me on a piece of string and swinging me across her window. Oh, would say Frau Schmidt. One day, Oscar asked his mother about the yellow star David had started to wear on his jacket. Muti, look at David's star. Can I have one like that? I'm afraid you can't, dear, she replied, because you are not a Jew. What is a Jew? asked Oscar. Jews are different to us. They have another religion. The government is against them and makes life very difficult for them. It is unfair and very sad, but they must now wear this yellow star to be singled out. Not long after, some men in black leather coats and others in uniform came to take David and his parents away. As he was leaving, David gave me to his best friend, Oscar. 
From the balcony, I watched with Oscar as David and other people wearing yellow stars were loaded into a truck and driven away. It was just the two of us. We missed David. At bedtime, we would talk about him and remember all the good times we had together. Another gloomy day was when we all went to the railway station to say goodbye to Oscar's father. He had become a soldier and was leaving for the front where the war was raging. Then the bombing started. When sirens wailed from the rooftops, we ran down to the cellar as quickly as possible to take shelter. Oscar always held me tight. Whole streets were blown to pieces. Among the ruins and the fires lay innocent victims. Then one day, a sudden explosion sent me flying in a cloud of smoke. I was knocked out. I don't know how long I was there, but it must have been several days before I woke up and found myself on a pile of charred rubble. Everything was in ruins. Then came tanks and soldiers. There was a lot of shooting. I found myself in the middle of a raging battle. Suddenly, a soldier saw me and stopped. He picked me up, and at that very moment, I felt a sudden piercing pain go right through my body. The soldier, holding me to his chest, fell down, moaning. He had been hit by the same bullet. Two men carried us away on a stretcher. The wounded soldier, an American G.I., was still clutching me against his bleeding chest. His name was Charlie. We were taken to a hospital where he kept me by his side. As he got better, he mended the rip in my fur made by the bullet. Charlie told all the nurses, look at him. Believe it or not, this teddy bear saved my life. He took the brunt of the bullet meant to kill me. Teddy bear hero saves life of G.I. Charlie. Look at me. When G.I. Charlie received the medal for bravery, he pinned it on my chest. The story made the newspapers. My picture was shown all over the place. I was very proud of all the attention. Charlie renamed me Alamo. I became the mascot of the regiment to bring the soldiers good luck. When the war was over, Charlie went home to America and took me with him. By now, I had learned enough English to understand what was happening around me. He pulled me out of his army duffel bag and gave me to his little girl, Jasmine, as a present. She was utterly delighted. I had found a new home. Jasmine pampered me, rocked me in her arms and sang songs in my ears that I had never heard before. I slept in a bed made out of a cardboard box. It was bliss. When Jasmine took me for a walk one day, my, na my happiness came to an end. Three nasty boys snatched me away from her. They used me as a baseball and hit me with a bat. You see the bat? Jasmine called for help, but nobody came. Half blind, having lost one eye, battered, ripped and caked with mud, 
I finally landed in a trash can. Is that my end? The next morning, I was picked out of the trash by an old lady wearing a baggy sweater, fastened with a string. She put me in a rickety baby carriage full of rags and empty bottles. She sold me to a man who had an antique store. He gave me a new eye, brushed off the mud, mended me and washed me. This is a very old bear. It's a collector's item, he said to himself, and he placed me in the store window. Look. There I sat, watching the world go by. No one wanted to buy me. Years and years passed. Then one rainy evening, a man stopped and stared at me through the window. He came into the shop and said with a heavy German accent, that teddy bear in the window was mine when I was a child. I know it's him because of the purple mark on his face. How much does he cost? The man was my old friend Oscar. I was so pleased that he recognized me. He looked so different. He took me home and for the second time my picture appeared in the newspapers. This time beside the headline, German war survivor finds childhood teddy bear in American antique shop. In the same city a man read the story in the newspaper. Excited he immediately tracked Oscar down and telephoned him. When Oscar answered the call, this is what I heard. Hello? Who? What? That's impossible! You, my friend David! And you live close by? Yes, Otto is here with me. We will come and see you right now. What's your address? We hurried into a taxi, and in an hour's time, we were together again. David and Oscar talked and talked and told each other what had happened since they had last seen each other. David and his parents had been sent to a terrible prison. Both his parents died there. David had been very sick, but he managed to survive. Oscar's father had died at war, and Oscar and his mother were trapped in the ruins during the bombing. They were both wounded. His mother didn't manage to escape, but Oscar did. Oscar and David had led lonely lives ever since, and now, reunited at last, they knew they would be much happier if they lived together. For the three of us, life was finally what it should be, peacefully normal. Since our happy reunion, I have kept myself busy pounding out this story on my typewriter. Here it is. And that's the end of the story. I hope you liked Otto and that you can use this to deal with war and the aftermath in the lives of human beings. When I teach this story, I do this within the scope of literature for inclusion. Till the next one.